All right, Yoreli, our newest Warframe. She is the Wave Rider. Some people call her as Hydroid's daughter. You can't say this is Hydroid's wife because she is a teenager at the very best. So just say this is Hydroid's daughter. She has survivability, but is not something you're going to be leaning on towards because she is squishy as all hell. All right. And this is my four former build for her because she's going to need a little bit of something as it comes to her survivability. Now, it depends on what you're going to roll with. I got me some duration with prime continuity, streamline, stretch, prime flow, rolling guard, vitality, intensify, and transient fortitude to go along with energy siphon and power drift. Now, this is where you want to mix and mingle with her because as I said before, she is squishy. You can have rolling guard here or you can have adaptation on. What you can also do if you could fit it in there, you can also have uh, quick thinking. You could have quick thinking in here if you could fit it in there. All right. That's another form of survivability. Should in case her health drops, you could feed off of her energy. Now, if you're going to go that route, you're going to have to do with the whole quick thinking shenanigans and then also have uh, rage on her either rage or if you want to have hunter adrenaline in there but considering that she's not a face tank i would suggest just having quick thinking to go along with vitality or if you want to have vitality with rolling guard or adaptation you're going to need a lot of survivability on her just so that she could stay upright and believe me she falls way too much all right but aside from that, however, what she makes up for is that now that her abilities and, of course, the buff that she has gotten is in a better place, her sea snares are better. It used to be um, blast as far as damage output, but now it's cold, so enemies will be slowed down. Sea snares... It's a some form of crowd control. It will keep them immobilized until the duration runs out. It will do damage to them over time. It's 250. And of course, with the build that I have having over 200 or just have 200, it's going to be 500. All right. Now, as you can see, my health, as far as with my Merodina, which is her second ability, that's on her K drive. But technically, it's like a seaweed kind of animal. And when they said that her ability, as far as Meridina, absorb a lot of damage, it doesn't absorb, it just eats up damage. Meaning once that health goes, you either come off your K-Drive or you dismount off of it. Also, if there are lasers around, the lasers will knock you off. So that's three ways. And I believe another way is if an enemy melees you, you just, they'll just knock you right off. So that this is her only form of survivability. This and of course rolling. Every Warframe has um, damage reduction, but this gives you damage reduction and on top of that with the health. Now, her Aqua Blades. These are very useful considering when you run around with the blades, if enemies want to get near you, good luck with that because this deals slash damage. So that's a third. Riptide. With this ability, though, when you cast it out there, it will drag enemies in and then blows them away in a watery burst. Now, each enemy trapped in the vortex increases the burst damage. What I tend to do with Riptide now is, I, is that I use Sea Snares. If enemies are congregating all around, use this. Once I use this, use Riptide. Keep them all in, depending on how much enemies are in. As you see, damage increase per enemy is 50%. It was at 25. They buffed it to 50. So now it does a damage of 5,000. But damage a second will start going up right there. So depending on how much enemies you have in the Riptide, 
it will do more damage. Now, it's also a note that you look at the tips when it comes to her because you could do a number of things with her. And also, her passive is better. It used to be at 100% critical chance for secondary weapons. Now, this is at 200. So, they gave her a buff after less than 23 or 22 hours because I, I voiced my opinion on her. She was in a bad place. It was She was um, so underwhelming. And a lot of people felt that same way too. They ended up fixing her, giving her buffs, all that stuff, all well and good now. Now, as you see, your relic have 15 C snares cast at a time. Once you cast your 16th, it will just cancel it out and go right back at the start. And see, Meridian is the key to your relic survival. I already explained about that. Aqua Blades inflict status. Talked about that as well. Stronger enemies are not taken down as staggered. They're staggered by the Aqua Blades, making it ideal for crowd control. So again, they will be staggered, which will be good. Riptide can temporarily incapacitate many enemies while also grouping them up together for follow-up attacks or finishers. That is if they survive the Riptide. When they incapacitate like that, you could follow that up with a melee finisher. Cool. You could do double jumps with the Marina, all that. Riding on her as well. C snare globes can be cast without targeting as well. Cast a C snare on enemies before Riptide will keep them trapped in globes if they survive the blow. So I could put Riptide on them and if they still survive, they'll still be ensnared by the C snares. So that's, that's practically her in a nutshell. Now as far as when you're dealing with enemies, it's like I said before. Once you got them all grouped up, you can use your ultimate on them and you deal more damage. Now, let me get rid of these corrupted guys. Bring them out there. This is like, what, 175? So, as far as with her in a nutshell, throw that out there. And you could just have them up there in stasis like that. Do damage over time. Do this and bam. That was 18k right there. So you're talking about eight of those guys. 5,000. Damage over time. Yeah, 18. So that was... Oh shit, about to fall to my dead little... Uh. So yeah, that was just those guys. Now, let's go on to the void enemies. Because you know I like dealing with void enemies. So, let's take off the butchers. Let's do some corrupted heavy gunners. Same, same situation. Using the same crap. So, throw that. Throw this. And throw, and throw this. All of them are up like that. Riptide them. Now, of course, they'll still be a survivor. See how they're still up there in stasis like that? Because the globes are still up. And I could just do it to them again. Of course, they'll still be up there. Now, as you can see, over time, it doesn't do that much damage. So even if I do all of this, now I could be creative and just run around, hit them with some form of slash. Bam on them like this. <clears throat> so you can just keep doing this onto them and they don't fly as far as they used to if you notice they don't fly away as far as they used to but it will do damage to them but it's not like something you're going to be depending on so as you can see even with all of that stuff on it's like yeah Put them up there. I'm just gonna finish these guys off because you know. Yeah, that goes. Her second ability is just like this. Like I said, you could do the whole double jump. But at times you could be immobilized in the air because once you hit something, you can't have no form of momentum of moving forward. So you gotta pay attention to that. <coughs> She could also gain speed as well. 
if you want to get away quickly. But that 15,000, you could put a whole bunch of survive, uh, a whole bunch of power strength on her. The enemies will, sh will just eat right through that. So it really doesn't matter how much power strength you put on her because once you're on your Meridina and they just shoot at you for a number of times, you're off of your K-Drive anyway. So it doesn't matter how much power strength you put on. It's just about just put just enough on, but at the same time, utilize your first ability, utilize your third and your fourth. Your second ability is there should in case you're about to go down, but it's not something I would rely on a whole bunch. Because even with that 15,000, I believe if you go into a survival in less than an hour, probably like 50, 55 minutes, you on that Meridina, all it takes is a bombard to knock you right off of that. And then now what? You got to keep going on your Meridina a whole bunch of times until what? Your C snares is not going to help you that much. It's just a little form of crowd control. Your third ability will apply slash onto them. And then you have your riptide to keep them in some form of crowd control long enough for you to stay alive. Use your second to get away. So it just comes down to the build and how you want to build your, um, your rally. This is how I build her for me. And also, when it comes to the Arcanes, Arcane Grace, you could have Energize, but I don't really, you know, say it's like a must. I just have it on because it's like a habit. I like to have Energize on my stuff. You can also have Arcane Guardian on her just because of the whole armor thing. But if you're going to go that route, you're going to have to buff up her armor because 100 is really not a lot. So you want to have Arcane Grace you want to have something else on her as far as some form of survivability because she is not going to be standing upright like how you would think. <clears throat> All right. So that's this is about build as far as with your rally. What you guys think about it. Let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure you like and subscribe. All that good stuff. So. Strength of 200, 145, 130, 128. All right, so this is my build. And that is Yoreli in a nutshell. She is a she's a fun Warframe just by her second ability. But aside from that, you're going to have to keep moving, trying to find ways to keep her standing up. Because if you just sit in one spot with her, she's not a face tank. She will drop. All right, so... That's your rally.